Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here, back with another video. And on the channel, we usually check out top tier smartphones retailing for six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred, or even a thousand dollars plus. But today we are checking out the budget friendly options. This is the Moto E, and it just came out this year in February. It normally retails for 150 bucks unlocked, but since Motorola just released their new Moto X lineup and a couple other devices, this has become even cheaper. I just picked this up for $75 completely unlocked. I feel this is a no brainer if you are on a budget or you're looking for maybe a secondary device to complement your device arsenal. The Moto E 2015 is the way to go. It's crazy to think that this phone cost 150 bucks or even cheaper if you manage to snag a deal. It performs every single function that a top end smartphone would. Maybe the slightest hint of lag and it doesn't have the best specs, doesn't feel as premium, but you'll always be thankful for all that money that you're saving in the end. And I get it, it doesn't look as slick or feel as nice as say an iPhone 6 or as sweet as an LG G4 or another premium Android device, but I will start things off with things that I don't like, which are the cameras. On the front we have a .3, that's right, a .3 megapixel VGA camera. And on the back we have a five megapixel sensor with no LED flash. So in dark situations, you will be left with the fuzziest of photos. In terms of actual video and photo quality, it was quick to autofocus, quick to snapshots, but the overall quality I felt was extremely grainy, was really dependent on how much light you had in the situation. If you're outside on an extremely bright sunny day, you will get half decent shots, but once light starts to dip down, unfortunately that's where we see the quality start to dwindle as well. Front facing camera, 0.3 megapixels, don't expect anything too crazy on this side. On the back also, it is made of a soft touch plastic. We've got that standard Motorola dent. It's nice to hold on to, place your finger on it, makes holding the phone just a tad bit easier. But the back is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, so keep your hands nice and clean, otherwise you will notice a lot of smudges on the back. The E has a 4.5 inch screen with a resolution of 960 by 540. That's only 245 PPI. On the side, we do have the volume rockers as well as the on and off slash sleep button. Taking a look around, we've got the micro USB port on the bottom for your charging. And up top, we have a centered three and a half millimeter headphone jack for your headphones of choice. A few more specs, it has 4G LTE, a quad core processor, 2390 milliamp hour battery, and I believe this model, the 4G, has the Snapdragon 410, whereas the 3G model, which is slightly cheaper, has the Snapdragon 200. If you're wondering, get the 4G LTE model. And as a quick last note, the E is water resistant. It's got that coating inside and out, which leads me to my next point, which is the actual housing. You can replace the SIM card and the micro SD card slot, but it does have a removable bumper. That's what I'll name it. You can swap these out for different colors. And on the sides, you can see that is where your fancy SIM card will go as well as micro SD card. And this removable bumper doesn't really compromise the build quality. It still feels sturdy in the hands. At no point did I feel like it came loose, but maybe something to consider if you don't like that all black look, swap that out and change the look of your Moto E to whatever color you want. Just a nice little customization option. As this is a Motorola phone, it is almost identical to stock Android. For those of you wondering, you won't notice too many differences. The 4G LTE model does come with Android 5.02 out of the box, whereas the 3G model, I think that's Android 4.4 KitKat. Someone mistake me or let me know down below in the comments. And also, if anyone can get more than three or four in this infernal game, you are the master. I bow down to your presence. In terms of size, if you've used the iPhone 6 Plus or any other device with a five and a half inch screen, the Moto E will feel like a dwarf in your hands, might even take some time to get used to. In terms of actual performance, doesn't match up once again to the flagships, but on the flip side, when I was using this to play games, say 3D games, 
any games that you would download. Applications, the actual Moto E seemed to perform without too much of a hiccup. I couldn't really notice when I was actually playing the game compared to other flagships. One thing to note though, loading times were a bit longer, but I don't think that will be too much of a deal breaker. And say you're switching between social media apps, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then even knocking some good old Candy Crush, you won't notice the difference unless you have another phone side by side. And once again, you're paying so little compared to other phones, even multitasking seems smooth. Yes, the Moto E does back up its price and have decent performance to boot. So that was my review of the Moto E 2015 slash the best budget smartphone in my opinion for 2015. If you know any other ones, let me know down below in the comments, but you will be hard pressed to find a device cheaper than say a hundred bucks fully unlocked. I mean, you just can't go wrong for that kind of money. If you guys like this video, found it of any use, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you already have it, and I will catch everyone else in my next episode. Peace.